In this video, we're going to define two specific functions, look at their graphs and see their domain and range. Let's start with the first one. We have identity function. And this is what the textbook definition of identity function is. We have f r to r defined by y equals to fx equals to x, where x belongs to r. Now I know this looks messy, this looks mathy, and no one wants to have this definition read. But with practice, we'll get much more fluent at reading these statements. Let's break this down. Let's look at this part, f r to r. What is r to r? Well, all this means is we're talking about real values. r is a set of real numbers, we'll input real values, and as an output, we'll also get real values. Here's a much more detailed interpretation. r is a set of real numbers, and whenever the range is r or any subset of r, we call it a real valued function. Further, when domain is also r, or a subset of r, we have a real function. So when just the range is real, we call it real valued. When both range and domain are real, we call it a real function. So what this means is this, what we have here is a real function. And a spoiler, we'll only be dealing with real functions. So we're only going to talk about it just once. All right, let's move on. What is this part? Y equals to fx equals to x. Well, this is where we have defined the function. This is where we have connected y with x. This is the definition of f. And what is this part? x belongs to r. Well, this gives us the domain. These are all the values that x can take. So let's summarize. What we have with us is a real function where y and x are connected like this, and x can take real values. The domain is x belongs to r. Okay, so let's try to graph this one now. We have y equals to fx equals to x. This is our x-axis, this is our y-axis, these are a few points. So let's try plotting y equals to x. When we put x as 1, we get y as 1, because y is equal to x. When we put x as 3, we get y as 3. When we put x as 0, we get y as 0. In fact, whatever we put, we'll get the same thing. So we can put a few more points and connect them. This is what we get if we connect all these points. We actually get a straight line passing through origin. This line passes through origin and it makes an angle of 45 degrees. Okay, so this is our graph of y equals to x. What's the domain? What's the range? Can you figure that out? Okay, so the domain will be the set of inputs that are allowed. All of these values are related to some value on the y-axis. So the way to think about this is, what are the values of x that you can input and actually get an output? There is no value where you can't get an output. Whatever you put, you get the same output. So this means the domain is r. And a very technical way of writing this is, the domain of this function f is all x where x belongs to r. We can say the same thing for the range. The range is all the outputs that you're actually getting. So you will get all the values that you can think of. In fact, you get all real values. So the range is also r. The range of this function f is the set of all y where y belongs to r. So this is the domain and range of this function. And because it gives back the same value that you input, this is also called the identity function. Okay, so let's look at one more function. This one is called the constant function and this is how we define it. f r to r defined by y equals to fx equals to c, x belongs to the set of real numbers and c is a constant. Let's break this one down as well. This part means that we're talking about a real function. This is the definition of the function. This is where we get the domain and c is just a constant. All right, let's try visualizing it. This is your x-axis, this is your y-axis. We'll put in an example, y equals to fx equals to two. We'll take two as a constant here. So this function says, you'll put in something and I'll give you two. So if I put in one, I'll get two. If I put in two, I'll get two. If I put in three or four or whatever, I'll get two. In fact, I'll put in any value, any real value, I'll always get two. So if I join all of them, this is what I get. This is the graph of y equals to two. It's a straight line that passes through y equals to two. The y coordinate of all of these points is, is two. That's by definition. You can also see that this line is parallel to x-axis. What about the domain and range? For domain, we'll look at the x values. Is there a value of x that you cannot take? No, 
you'll take all the values and you'll get something in fact you get 2 what about y what are the values that y will have what possible outputs are you going to get well here we're not going to get all possible outputs we're stuck with 2 we'll only get the output as 2 so the range here is just 2 and we can write this down the domain is x where x belongs to r and the range is just 2 a single element let's take a different example if you have y equals to minus 3 your line will pass through minus 3 your domain will be r but your range here will be minus 3 and in general when y is equals to fx equals to c your domain will be r but your range will be c so we have learned how to define identity function and constant function we have seen their graphs and we now know what their domain and range are